Hey there, uh, Casita trailer owners. Uh, today we're going to show you how to service your uh, hot water heater. So what are we doing going in this cabinet? Well, we're going in here to get our tools. So first we're going to need this thing, which is a little washout wand. Okay. And then we're going to need this little gadget, which is the one and one eighth six-sided socket on a breakout bar with a little three inch extension. Actually maybe that's a four inch extension. Anyways, uh, this is the tool you needed to do the job easily. So now that we've got our tools, we can go outside and start to work on getting the anode out. Okay, here we are at the hot water heater. And uh, before uh, I pull the uh, anode on the hot water heater. I want to show you some little things here. I have this little protective screen, uh, fine screen, over the 1 8 inch screen that they sell to protect your inlet. But I keep this all on it when I'm at home here because it gives a much higher level of protection against the bugs going in there. In fact, I just found some uh, caterpillars nesting back of the edge here, so I'm glad I have this on here. So anyways, we undo the little latch here. We can come inside here. Notice also inside here I screen this vent. So and this is this uh, silver air conditioning type tape. Seems to have a good adhesive qualities. I'm pretty happy with this stuff. Actually works better than duct tape. So this is another way to keep the the bugs out. So what we're going to be doing here is uh, draining the uh, inside tank and pulling the anode. Now I want to show you a couple of little things here that uh, you won't see in everyone's casita hot water heater. Number one is I've notched corners here. And number two, I have a sealant running along here so the water does not go in and get trapped inside of this uh, metal mounting housing, which it was doing before, and not draining out properly. And third, you will see I have installed a cool little drain hole here, which is really the nail side of a little cap fastener, and I have attached that to a little piece of brass tubing, which comes through and exits right there. See it? So that lets the uh, water that's going to all puddle up here drain out. Get any moisture, it'll kind of just sit in here if your trailer's not level. But with this nifty little drain, it goes out. If not, it's going to build up to higher than this lip, which is about, it's almost a quarter inch, probably three sixteenths of an inch before it starts to go outboard. Higher if uh, she's tilting a little bit to uh, starboard. Well, I see my battery's dying, so I'm going to stop here. And, uh, oh, well, one other thing I want to say is, you notice I have a little copper wire which comes from the edge of the housing and goes around the nut. And what this is doing is giving me really good positive contact between the inside or the, uh, the edge of the socket and the center of the anode. Uh, in the small event that the nylon Teflon tape or Teflon tape there is not uh, cut and allowing for a good contact. So this eliminates that problem. And since it's only been about a month and a half, about six weeks since I pulled this, you can see uh, I even had some Vaseline on here. The level of corrosion is pretty good, which means that this wire is really doing its job. So uh, we're going to pull this and uh, we have to take off the wire. So we'll stop here and we'll get the tools. Okay, we're back. And uh, hopefully you can hear me with this uh, wind and a little bit of highway noise in the background here. But uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to take off this wire. Now this wire, uh, it's just coiled on here. It's coiled around pretty tight and uh, it's stuck into the uh, little metal housing. 
on the back side there, there's like little slots where the insert uh, is, uh, you know, expands for the uh, three-quarter inch fitting to come through. And I then just got it stuck into one of those slots. And by that being in there, it uh, gives you a pretty good contact. So I'm just going to take that out. And I'll probably reuse this. You see, sorry for the crappy camera work there. Now, now we're going to get ready to put our wrench on here. And remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So, you want to left. And socket fits on here really nice. Remember, this is a 1 and 1 16th hex bolt here. So we're going to be removing that. Now the first time I did this, I did not equalize the pressure or pull off the pressure here. And that was stupid because when I got this thing unthreaded, it shot out like a missile. In fact, if I was in front of this thing, it probably would have hurt quite a bit. Not to mention it can mess up the threads. So you have to take all the pressure out of the tank and you do that by just lifting up on this. I don't want to get my camera wet so I'm going to shut off film in here but I'm going to, well maybe I can do it from on top so let's see. We'll just do it slowly. Try to do it like this so you can see. Now you can't see like that can you? So let's see. How about like that? Can you see there? Oh yeah. Plenty of you can see there's some good pressure in there. There. So like, make sure all the pressure leaves the hot water tank. They don't tell you that little aspect in the directions. Either that or I missed it. But it's important. So now we don't have any pressure here. We go ahead and get our socket on here. And yes, all your tools are going to get wet. So uh, I'm going to stop my filming here. Just to show you now, I have my uh, socket on there. And I have my uh, long, uh, they call it a breaker bar, but since it's been in and out, it has Teflon tape on it. There's not much breaking going on, but uh, we're just going to, you know, go lefty-loosey now and remove the, uh, the anode. Ooh, so exciting. Okay, now I have uh, removed the anode. One thing uh, will happen when you get it out, it'll start coming out glup, glup, glup. And a lot of crap's going to come out with it. Uh, a lot of fine particles. and They're actually pieces of the anode. Now here's the anode after it was just taken out. You can see this part of the Teflon tape there. And you can see all the corrosion. Now this anode is only a few months old and the trailer hasn't been plugged in much but you can see it's already got aggressive wear. Um, I wouldn't replace it yet but because uh, there's still a lot of material here. Um, I prefer the magnesium over the aluminum because uh, aluminum in any type of water system is kind of linked with uh, Alzheimer's. So uh, I'm forgetful as it, enough as it is so I think I'll try to keep the aluminum out of my water supply. Um, I'm not sure if magnesium is good for you either, but probably isn't. But uh, anyways, uh, once it starts coming out of here, glup, 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 if you want it to shoot out, you can, you know, make sure that uh, you've got your tools out of the way and then put this uh, vent valve back to vertical and, and it'll come flying out of here. Remember, there's uh, six gallons back there and uh, that's all going to come flying out at you. Um, and then wait, you have this to deal with. Uh, which really looks like garbage right now, but uh, we'll clean it up and have another look at it. And what we're going to do next now is get that wand and try to wash out the inside of the tank, which is like all these little pieces of uh, crumbly uh, metal discharge that's coming off this thing. If you can see this in my hand, uh, this is you know this is what you got in there. It's just a total mess. Um, so this is a uh, how they deal with corrosion. It's, uh, it's a pretty messy solution. It's too bad there isn't something that's a little more elegant and cleaner, but uh, 
this is what you're dealing with when you pull this thing out. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is use a special wand. This is a hot water tank flush out wand to go get in there and see if we can get more of that crap that's all over the bottom of the tank to come out. So we do this by, you know, putting on this little valve here and shooting this jet stream of water in and all around and hopefully we can get out more of all those little particles and things so that they don't end up going into your water system. I really don't think they, uh, they get in your water system much, but uh, once in a while they do. Hey, comes a visitor. You want to learn about the water tank too. Are you interested? Come on, it'll be interesting. Stay, buddy. This is important info if you ever get a trailer. Yeah, come on back. Okay. Another visitor. Uh, what I want to show you is the wand and how it goes in and out. You know, this is a wand. Uh, they also make a metal one. I'm not too keen on the metal one because, you know, that can damage the threads. Or there's a potential that it can damage the threads. You ain't going to have this, that problem with this one. Um, what you're doing is letting this thing just pretty much run around inside and irrigate the heck out of this. It's essentially like a troll car, if you're uh, familiar with the medical business. The troll car is used to get in there and clean things out. And also used in embalming. <laughs> we won't go there. Ew. Anyway, as you can see, the water seems coming out pretty good, and I'm going to try to rotate that head around. All sorts of angles in there to see if I can get any particulates to come out. And I'm, I'm pulling this out towards the edge, too, as I'm doing it. Here. I'm just going to kind of let this run some. And you have your on-off, shut-off valves here, which are really handy. Also, uh, you know, it's good to have a little stool to sit on. If you ain't sitting on a stool, this is a this is a backbreaker. If your bra back is getting slightly old and tired, and mine is. All right, let me stop this. Well, we've got the uh, anode out here, and we're kind of just mopping up here, kind of rinse down a little bit here. Uh, you'll notice that uh, if you have screens or anything, or even if you don't, you'll start catching a lot of that material that's coming out of that tank in this area here which you have to kind of clean off and it also gets kind of splashy all around the unit it's uh, it's best to just let it dry off uh, make sure it all dries off completely before you even attempt to start it uh, most of these fittings here that have electronics on them are either water resistant or waterproof but still I'd, I'd wait like a day before I even started this thing back up again but right now it just uh, going to let uh, the inside of the tank dry up a bit. We're going to make sure these threads are clean. And we're going to service our anode a little bit. And we can uh, shut this valve completely now. Sure safety. Pressure safety release valve is what that is there. So uh, we're just going to let things dry out and we'll put the lid up afterwards and now we'll go on with the uh, next step in the process